Do the Montreal Canadiens have a problem identifying talent out of Quebec? Or is there a problem with the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League? Is there a problem with drafting? Is there a problem on them passing up? Have there been a lot of examples? We'll discuss all of this because my buddy, Brendan Kelly of the Montreal Gazette, What the Puck, actually wrote an article about it saying what in the world is going on the last time the Canadians had a francophone star who wasn't a goalie was back in the Turgeon Danfous days. He and I will try and tackle it right here on the Sick Podcast at Marinero. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you marinero welcome back it is the sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 beer intense by nature the beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark and lacage if the last time you went to lacage was when the habs had a 50 goal score or when was or was it the last time they had a star player from the province of quebec it's time you went back to lacage the menu will surprise you take a look at this tweet from brendan kelly who was the last genuine star francophone Quebecer on the Habs who was not a goalie? Off the top of my head, you'd have to go back to the mid-90s when Pierre Turgeon and Vincent Danfus wore the C.H. How crazy is that? What the puck? I have him on right now. Brendan Kelly, what's going on? Uh, you know, just the usual, uh, Tony, you know, summer in Montreal talking about the Habs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before we actually started recording this, uh, you were mentioning to me, you were giving me an opinion on uh, the status of uh, English sports radio right now in Montreal. Do you want to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, you want I, to pick up on what you said or uh, you want to? Oh, I mean, uh, I love your show at uh, 10 in the morning on that. St- oh, no, actually, you're not there anymore, right? No, you know what? I mean, a, lo- a lot of big changes. They lost two guys and you and, uh, and Knuckles, uh, you know. Top times of it, but it's, uh, listen, I still listen to TSN 690. I listen to 91.9. I find it tough. You know what? Honestly, I find it tough in the summer because all I want to hear about is hockey, you know, and there's there's not enough interesting hockey chat, period, you know, and they're really scraping, eh, right now to sort of find stuff to to talk about with the Habs and it can't all be as interesting as what the puck let's put Yeah. It. Listen, I think 91.9 sports is an excellent sports radio station. I think they're going to be fantastic within a couple of weeks. All right. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's move on. All right. Okay. So what are you complaining about now? What's the story with you? I mean, you know, me grumble, 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 but no, I mean, I was just saying, you know, uh, in the column that I wrote the, what the puck column this week, there was a lot of talk about Patrice Bergeron, you know, and, and yeah. I mean, I never believed for a second he was going to come to Montreal, but there was a yeah. lot of talk about it. You know, one of the great Quebecois stars of yeah. this era, and of course he just re-signed a very team-friendly deal with the Boston Bruins for one year, $2.5 million with another $2.5 million. In yeah. So I was just saying it's interesting. There were three Francophone players. There was a lot of talk this summer. So there was there was Bergeron. There was yeah. all. Jonathan Huberdeau, who who was traded, of course, to the Flames from Florida. And oh, when, hold on a second, hold on a second. Why was there talk of Huberdeau? He still had one year left on his contract with the Panthers. People were saying, and it was out there on social media, and maybe it's just dreaming, but people are saying there's one year left on his contract. He's okay. going to be an unrestricted free agent in the summer of 2023. Of course, this is before he signs his deal with uh, his long-term eight-year deal with the, with the Flames. So that when he would become an unrestricted free agent the following summer, that somehow Montreal would get him. Of course, that's not going to be happening. But the most serious discussion, obviously, and there really was clearly something going on there, was with Pierre-Luc Dubois. 
um, and that there would be a trade between the Winnipeg Jets and the Montreal Canadiens. Pat Brisson, his agent, certainly stoked the flames of that by saying that Dubois would, you know, would like to play in Montreal. And again, that one didn't uh, happen. The Jets, you mean? The Jets, the Jets. The Jets, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So um, it just had me thinking, you know, that it really had, I mean, and, and, and obviously that's what we're going to talk about is why is this, but the reality is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that, is that there has not been a star francophone player who is okay. not, who's played with the Montreal Canadiens since the days of Pierre Turgeon, who's only here for a little more than a season and a half, I would say. Yeah. And of course, Don Dan Foots. And so I find it a little weird. I find okay, it. But, but, but hold on a second. Let, let's tackle one at a time. All right. First of all, Patrice Bergeron, all right, who grew up a Quebec Nordiques fan, who was drafted by the Boston Bruins and said the Boston Bruins were the only team that he would play for, okay? So that's got nothing to do with the Canadians because he wouldn't have gone to the 31 other teams or the 30 other teams either, all right? So let's just get that out of the way. And why would Patrice Bergeron want to come on a one-year deal to a team that's rebuilding and is likely going to finish in the bottom five in the league? The same thing for Christopher Latang. Why would he want to sign with a team that's going to be rebuilding over the next couple of years. He wouldn't want to sign either. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Pierre-Luc Dubois. Why should the Canadians make a trade for Pierre-Luc Dubois? And I mean, when he's going to be UFA in a year and the Canadians are rebuilding, why would they, why would they want to do that? Like, I don't... Listen, I was actually, no, I, I totally went, when those rumors were out there, and I really do believe that they were trying to make a deal uh, for, for Dubois, when those rumors were out there around the time of the draft, I I agree. I said it's a terrible idea, but I could see, and I, I think it was uh, my colleague Sue Cowan who said to me on Twitter, he said, it does make, I mean, obviously we don't need, the Canadiens don't need Pierre-Luc Dubois this year, correct? Because they're not going anywhere this year. But if you were able to trade for Dubois and sign him for, you know, whatever amount, six to eight years, then it would be worth it because, you know, he's, you know, how old is Dubois? No, it's not going to be worth it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Colorado, right? Heard of them. In and first, Landeskog second, Byram fourth, Makar fourth. Nachushkin 10, Ranton and 10, not to mention Kadri 7 from another organization, Johnson 1st from another organization. The way you win the Stanley Cup nowadays is to have a lot of top 10 picks. So if you sign Dubois, you uh, trade for Dubois and then sign him to a long-term deal, you're not going to have a lot of top 10 picks over the next couple of years because you're going to be competitive. So it's counterproductive. What, well, uh, what don't you, you understand? Yeah, no, I know, but you're like the hardcore uh, rebuild guy. and that's I'm the logical guy, not the hardcore rebuild guy. I'm the guy who saw them do it one way for the last seven, almost 30 years, and they haven't won, and is saying you got to do it a different way. Tony, you're many things. You're many things, many of them great. But logical is not the first word that comes to mind. You're a very emotional guy. I mean, I, uh, I think I think by me proning and preaching the rebuild, I think it's very logical thing. They're not going to be. Well, just so you know, so I kind of I don't disagree with you, but just so you know, Hughes and Gorton aren't doing a rebuild. I can tell you that right now. Just They're so not. you know, they are doing a rebuild. I can tell you that right now. You and your Ramonis shirt or whatever you're wearing. For it's three, a joker. What, what, what are they doing exactly if they're not doing a rebuild? What, what are they doing? They're doing, you know, remember, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I was not a big fan of the previous general manager. I don't know if you ever heard that, but I was not yeah. a big fan of Mark Bergevin. So um, I'm very happy with what Gordon and Hughes are doing, but they're not doing a classic rebuild. I mean, we'll, we'll talk in a year and you'll see that they're not doing that. You know, they are, they're just doing an accelerated rebuild. That's what, well, that's what I would say is remember. It's a rebuild though. It's just accelerated. Instead of going out and acquiring draft picks, they're acquiring prospects who were drafted two or three years ago because they're further along in their development. It's still a rebuild. It's uh, not, the, day, I, the day, the day, the day keep Jeff Petrie. No. Are they going to keep several other players going forward? No. 
Uh, they do have, they want to alleviate cap space? Yes, it's a rebuild. You know what? It isn't. So, I mean, that's just the fact. I mean, it's, right, whatever you say. I'm right. You're wrong. Um, <laughs> but no, look. The I reality, look that question. It, the, part of the problem is it got the team got effed up so badly by this previous general manager that they can't actually properly rebuild because they can't friggin get rid of the people who are there because the first person you would get rid of in a rebuild is a chap named Brendan Gallagher but he's untradeable because that contract's so awful the other person you would get rid of is a, is another fellow named Carey Price but you can't get rid of him because there's no one in the world that's going to take that contract I mean they offered Carey Price for free like you just can take okay. battle and they said no we don't we, we, we got to understand something yeah. When they hired Mark Bergerman, this is not to defend the guy. This is basically the way I see it. Okay. Yeah. When they hired Mark Bergerman, I wasn't there at the time in terms of part of those discussions. So I don't know for sure, but I'd be willing to bet that Mark Bergerman and the other candidates who were going through the interview process asked if they could rebuild. And I would imagine they were told no because Mark Bergerman came in had the third pick overall in the draft, drafted Alex Kalchenyuk, and slowly but surely made some moves to try and patch the team to become more competitive thereafter, year after year after year right. after year. Okay? Once Mark Bergevin was five or six years into his tenure, right. and it wasn't working out, he was not going to go to the general manager and say, hey, uh, to the president of the team and say, hey, by the way, I want to rebuild now. He wasn't going to do that. So what he tried to do, is he tried to stay competitive some years it worked some years it didn't until the final year where he pretty much went all in the team got to the final whether you agree or disagree on how they got there they got there I but unfortunately we realized that that what happened was not sustainable and if he would have continued as general manager and signed an extension he still would have tried to make some moves to try to get them back to the playoffs and try and go all in for another year or two because he could not go back to the owner and say, I want to rebuild. Now, since they went through that process, which lasted nine and a half years, and it didn't work out, it was easy for the owner and or the executive VP of Hockey Ops when they sat down and had coffee for either one of them or both of them to say, going forward, I think what has to happen here is this team needs a rebuild. It's easy to yeah. say. Look, we, we, you know what? to do. We'll see what happens in the future. And the fact of the matter is that you and I are just looking in from the outside and we don't know. But I, I think we're actually not even disagreeing that much. I mean, I agree. They're like, like Bergevin's famous thing was reset on the fly. Well, they're doing a rebuild on the fly because they realize, and I think, you know, if you dissect the comments from Hughes and Gorton, they are not going to suck out the joint for four years. They are not going to do that. They believe that Montreal fans can't live with that. But at the same time, like, for example, they're going to try to compete this year and they won't be able to compete because the team's simply not good enough. And they probably will be. It wouldn't be surprising if they're in the bottom five of the league, though. You know, one of the wrinkles there is, is, is as usual, going into this current season, the biggest question mark around the Montreal Canadiens is the same question mark it's been for 10 years, which is Carey Price. So I don't believe this will happen. I believe Carey will not play many games and not be very good. But if he were to come out and play 60 games and be... I don't I don't see that happening. I agree with you. I don't think he's going to start the season. You've got to admit, it's a possibility. And yeah. if that happens, they might be a wild card, close to wild card team if he, if he was amazing. But he won't be, I know. But I'm just saying. Right, okay, so if you want to bet on that, Betway, for the love of the game, you could sign up and deposit... On Betway for a 100% deposit bonus, the easiest sports book for Canadians. E-transfers are accepted immediately. I'm going to tell you this. Your piece on the Canadians haven't had a Francophone star in the longest time since Dom Fuss and, uh, and uh, Turgeon that play at the forward position, yada, yada, yada. Here's the deal. It's not a Montreal Canadiens problem. Yes, it is. It's a hockey Quebec problem. It is both. No, it's a hockey Quebec problem. I'm going to explain it to you. You realize that when Dom Fuss and Turgeon used to play, that there, there were a lot more players coming out of Quebec then in the 90s and in the early 2000s than there are now. You realize that Correct. there are less Quebec players drafted in the National Hockey League in the last couple of years. There are less and less every year. You realize that, right? How many were drafted? I, I, I don't have it in front of me, but there was something like 
18 or so from the queue that were drafted in that, that latest draft. So you do have to ask yourself, yes, it's true that we all know, and, and I had that quote from Jeff Molson, right, who spoke to me about this a couple of years ago. There are less and less, you know, as a percentage of the players in the league, there are less Quebecois players. That we know. Everyone knows that. And you're right, there is a problem with, with, uh, with Hockey Quebec. But at the same time, and it's good that Legault has got a commission looking into that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he doesn't have more important things to do. Well, I mean, yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's nothing more important than hockey. But at the same time, you have to say if, and I'm just making up the figure, but we can check it. But there was, say there was 18 players from the Q pick. The Canada picked one player at, I believe, again, off the top of my head, number 216 in the seventh and last round. I, I, I hate to break it to you. There's no Quebec-born player that was drafted in 2022 that will be an NHL star. I hate to break it to you. No, probably not. But the point is that... So what's that your point? There, no, the point is... You want to draft players for the sake of drafting them or what? Montreal could have made an effort to get some of these players... Just as they could have made it, there are decent Quebecois francophone players out there. They could have Your made. Your article's not about decent Quebecois francophone players. It's about having a francophone star. Correct. And, so we're and, not talking decent now. Decent, decent. Well, we don't even have. So there's a lot of people that work in this business. They're decent, and there's a lot of, and there's some that are stars like me. So I, what are we talking about here? Well, we, we're, we're, we, the, the, the two things go hand in hand. I get, yeah. and I'm agreeing with you that it's harder to get. Quebec players now, but some teams do get them, and we've made zero effort. The Canadiens have made zero effort. Who I mean, gets them? The other teams. Okay. Who? Well, I mean, where does Jonathan Huberdeau play? Yeah, he, well, right now he plays for the Calgary Flames. You know where Jonathan Huberdeau was drafted? What's that? You know where he was drafted? No, where was he drafted? Third overall. What did you want the Canadians to do? If they don't have that pick, what do you want them to do? Well, I'm, that's one case. That they, was in 2011. Okay, what? so give me another. So that case that you brought up is wrong. Give me another case. The the uh, uh, Pierre Luc Dubois. They try. I know they tried to get him that. Pierre Luc Dubois was drafted third overall that year. They didn't have a pick at third overall. What do you want them to do? Well, so that so it, it, it's just so, so your logic is that they'll never be able to get a star Quebecois player. You know that that year, the Canadians were hoping Dubois was going to go fourth. They were thinking that... They were going to make a deal, right? With Jesse Pugliarvi was going to go number three to Columbus, and right. they figured that Edmonton was going to take Dubois at four. That's the year they traded P.K. Subban. They wanted to trade Subban at the draft to the Edmonton Oilers and to get a couple of players and their fourth pick overall. And if they got their fourth pick, they would have drafted Dubois. So they liked Dubois. They did. Right. Okay, but they didn't have the third pick overall. So you brought up Duberdo, who was drafted third in 2011. They didn't have that pick. You brought up Pierre-Luc Dubois, who was drafted third overall in another draft year. They didn't have that pick. So what else do you got? No, no. Is this the best you have? What do you mean it's the best I have? Like, it's not even an art. Is What you're saying is not even an argument. If, if like, so they can never, ever get a star Quebecois player. I mean, it makes... Are well, you going to blame them for not drafting Lafreniere either? Because he went first in 2020. I know. So, but, but by your logic, they will never, ever be able to get a star Quebecois player. But, but, but if this year, the number one pick would have been a francophone, they would have drafted him. But there weren't any. Yeah. Well, it's just funny then that so so other teams can get francophone players. I'll tell you where they blew it. They blew it when they took Corey Urquhart in 2003 with the 40th pick instead of taking Patrice Bergeron with the 45th pick. They they now, you know, when I, they blew it when they took La Tendresse in 2005 at 45th instead of taking Christopher Latang who went 62nd, but, but hold on a second here. Hold on. As much as they blew it 44 times, Bergeron was passed up of as course. much as, as much as they blew it 61 times, Latang was passed up. So the Canadians are not the only team that blew it. Now they should probably not blow it in their own backyard, but That's everyone else blew it back then too. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, the again, the logic is faulty there. I mean, I get it. We all know 
Like there's always Patrick Waugh, what number was he drafted? There it all even Subban was, you know, like you know, like there's there's lots of amazing players that get drafted late. So people, you know, it's hard to evaluate. You, but you want to give me besides Bergeron Latang, do you want to give me some examples or well, no, but if you go back, it's, it, again, it's it's not just even drafting. It's like when Daniel Briere is available as a free agent. Yeah. Correct? And they threw $55 million at him, and he said, no. What do you want them to do, throw 75? Well, I'm not even just, you, you know, I'm not, I mean, um, maybe. You realize they tried to trade for Vinny Cab. By the way, if they would have traded for Vinny LeCavier, you realize how many pieces they would have given up, eh? No, I do. It was 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 it Price? It was four players for Vinny LeCavalier. And Price and Subban were in the deal. No, obviously it would have been a terrible deal, but again. So, I, so what it, you know, you realize that because <clears throat> of the pressure of having a Francophone star here, they went out and they made that trade for Jonathan Drouin, and they gave up Sergachev, and obviously it didn't work out. I I, I don't look, <clears throat> I agree with you that. They should not draft a Lucas Vedamo over a Nicholas Roy. They should not draft a Latandres over a Latang, and they shouldn't draft a Nurkarard over a Bergeron. Um, but, I mean, other than that, they, they threw 50-plus million dollars at Briere. They tried to make a deal for Vinny LeCavalier. Le, Le, Briere didn't want to sign here. Lafreniere went first in the draft. Drouin went third. Uh, Huberto went third. Dubois went third. Because of the pressure in the building, they drafted LeBlanc at 18. He was never going to be a star, but it was the wrong pick, and they ended up choosing him because they felt they had to pick the kid from here in a draft that was in their building. I, I Let's bring up the chart. <clears throat> Look at this chart. This is the amount of players. Let me put on my glasses here because this chart's not big. Yeah. This is the amount of players that were drafted, born in Quebec in the National Hockey League. Okay. In 1990, you had about 90 players. You had about 95 in 91. You went over 100 in 1994. You went over 100 in 1999. You went over 100 in 2001. From 2001, and this chart goes from 1990 to 2021, look at where we are in 2021 now. There's less than 60 players, not drafted actually, born in Quebec, who are playing in the National Hockey League. Born in Quebec, playing in the National Hockey League, there's less than 60. There's 32 teams. So on average... That's less than two Quebecers per team. Correct. So what do you want? Yeah, I, I, if you know what, it just, I, 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 you know, you said earlier on that you're a logical person, but there's absolutely no logic to your argument. I mean, I'm agreeing with you on all the facts. There's, there's nothing to dispute. I mean, I had a quote in my, my uh, piece from Jeff Molson saying exactly the same thing. There's less Quebec players. But they're still drafted, you know, roughly 18 players this year, and they could have made an effort to get some, and they could have. You said a star. There's no star coming out of this draft. How many times have I got to beat these things to this guy? Man, okay. where did I find this guy? You know what? It's, 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 yeah. my point is only, you know what? Yes, it probably wasn't a star in the 2022 20, uh, draft. That's life. But to say that they could never somehow, it's just, with the numbers now that it's absolutely impossible for them to have a star French player? No. It's not, it's not impossible. It's more difficult than ever. Yes. Uh, Quebec is not doing a good enough job. That's why they had to set up this whole committee and stuff to try and turn it around. You want to see stars? WWE, they're going to have a lot of them, and they're going to be in Montreal on Friday Night SmackDown on Friday, August 19th. And we're giving away some tickets, and it's now time for me to announce the winners. Are you ready? Yes. Andy Zaff. Center Heiss, Jean-Nicolas Torcotte, Patrick Farrell, Gaetan Bay, Terry Obey, Jason S.F., Eric Martin, Peter Galanopoulos, Miriam Furfaro. So all you have to do is email 
info at the sickpodcast.com to claim your tickets, where I imagine we'll ask for a piece of ID. And once we get it, you'll get your tickets and you're going to Friday night SmackDown. Are you going to be there? Friday, uh, August 19th? No, you know what? Friday night, I'm actually covering the Lasso uh, co- Country Festival. On the 19th of August? That's not this Friday. It's the one after. So oh, I thought you meant this week. Yeah, I have, uh, I have, uh, I think I got ringside seats, maybe if you want yeah. to join me or whatever. Yeah. We go together? Well, I don't, I'd have to look it up with the powers that be if, uh, I don't know if they, uh, what about, are you going to well, sign them yet? Who's this guy, Center Heist? Well, it, I don't know who it is, but I don't know him personally, but he's obviously someone who entered our uh, our is contest. That- and speaking of which, if you like the podcast, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, comment sick. And if you're listening on audio, please leave a five-star review and write sick, S-I-C-K. That's our way of feeling the love. All right. I think you, you hadn't wrote an article in quite some time. You think I've forgotten how to write columns? No, I think-, I think you just wrote one to complain for the sake of complaining. I think there's I'm no, not- ma- I like you. All right. That's why I've had you on on several occasions, but I, 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 I you know, writing what you wrote about, uh, what are we doing here? You know what? You know, it's interesting. What do you want them to draft? Lafreniere, he, he went first. You're starting up soon on 91.9, the main uh, fragment. That's, that's news to me. This is uh, yet to be confirmed. Uh, there is nothing official. So the rumor that you're going to be doing that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so you're okay. I can say you're going to be on with Jean Charles on TVA Sports, right? Correct? That's for sure. That is official. So there's a lot of your Francophone colleagues who yeah. 100% agree with what I wrote. And so you're just saying it's idle complaining. But the reality is it is an issue and it's always been an issue and it should be an issue because the Montreal Canadiens are not just a hockey team and, and they do they do have to think about their relationship to the French language community in Quebec and that's all that I was pointing out and I still And I will point out I will point out that I too agree that I think it's important that the Canadians have players from the province of Quebec and I think that's great. But what's more important is that they have the good ones. I'm going to give you a case in point. In you remember a couple of years ago, it was the end of the world because the Canadians didn't have a player from the province of Quebec in their lineup for one specific game. You remember that? Because Jonathan Drouin was out with an injury and Phil Deneau was out with a concussion. You remember that? Yes, of course. Okay. That year in the playoffs, they had one player from the province of Quebec who played. One. His name was Philip Deneau. That team went to the Stanley Cup final, okay? Right. The year after that they had a bunch of players from Quebec, they finished last in the league. I'm not saying that players from Quebec are not good. It's not what I'm saying. Hear me out. Because when they last won the Cup, I believe they had 13 players from Quebec, okay? Correct. But you need to have the good ones. Correct, but that's it. I mean, Stephen when... LeBeau when- was a really good one. No. Vincent Dafus was a really good one. And what happened? Eric Desjardins was a really good one. And Patrick what- Roy was a really good one. Guy Carboneau was a really good one. No need to be screaming and yelling. I mean, you go back to your thing that you said your law. It's not logical to be screaming and yelling at me. You shouldn't be screaming. What, what happened to Philip Dano? Uh, they made him an offer, right. which my understanding is five years, five million per season. Right. And he ended up signing six years at five point five million per season. In other words, not Los Angeles Kings. And he got in a in a ridiculous mano a mano fight with Bergevin and never got another word from Bergevin after he turned down that contract in the fall. And so in fact, and I don't just put it at Bergevin's feet, it's been it's been a, it's been a problem with management of the Habs as I point out in the article since the nineties, since they haven't been able to hang they had actually something of a francophone star in Deno and they just threw it through it through that throughout the baby with Deneau the- was not a star he's a good player oh well, that's right. a big word he's a very good player i right. would take him on my team any day to oh. week and twice on sundays back then they had a little bit of a dilemma because they had uh signed tyler to foley to a four-year deal at 4.25 a year and to was having a great year and so it's how do you give the no 5.5 when Toffoli's making 4.25? That's the dilemma they had. The year after, they ended up trading Toffoli because... It's just an were- tug of war, as usual, with Bergevin, and they lost. And Dano said it himself. If it really was what you're saying, 
then they would have discussed it. They never discussed. He said he never had another word. I know, but your your article is they haven't had a francophone star since Turgeon and Don Fus, who played at the forward position. Okay. With all due respect to Philip Deneau, I told you how much admiration I have for him. Right. Not at that okay? level. Right. He's not at Dan Fus and he's not at Turgeon. So what are we talking about here? Well, yeah. I mean, so so it's. I'm just saying, like the the reality is, he's a he's a he's a good francophone player, and they couldn't hang on to him. They're and not I'm, the first team to see an un, a player who was headed towards unrestricted free agency walk to go somewhere else. It happens every year. Yeah, I mean, Johnny Gaudreau just left Calgary. I I heard about that, but I mean, the reality is. That uh, if you think it's normal, that's fine, and you can explain. I, I don't think it. Yeah, I think it's unfortunate when you lose a player for nothing. I'm not saying that. I mean, I'm saying if you think it's 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 understandable that they they haven't had anything approaching a star francophone forward since Pierre Turgeon and Vincent Demfus, you're entitled to your opinion. I think it's a little weird, as I said in my tweet. And I don't. I don't think it's normal. I think it's just more difficult now than it ever has been. Yeah, and maybe you got to make uh, a little more effort. And and you know what? I mean, God, the like the Tampa Bay Lightning has got a better scouting. Maybe it's better now, but until recently, Tampa Bay had a better scouting network in Quebec than the Canadian. They would miss. Yeah, people. and Tampa Bay has a better scouting network in general than every other team in the National Hockey League. So, what's your point? You well, what's be- your point? I mean, they're the they're, they're the best. What do you want me to tell you? Well, they're not. They're uh, they're not the best. Well, who's the best at scouting? No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I would say that Al Murray probably runs a better department than any other team in the National Hockey League, and and maybe there's somebody else, but uh, the, the, Stamkos, the, 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 Hedman, Vasilevsky, um, Kucherov, Palat, um, Braden Point. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's been there's been several, so, but uh, they've done yeah, a really good job. Think, so it's like if you think that's normal that Tampa Bay has better scouts in Quebec than Montreal, that's again you're a no. They're, they're, they shouldn't. Opinion. They shouldn't. The Canadians should right. dominate, and they their don't. Backyard, and they don't. Correct. And they don't. And there, you're right. Everything else, you were wrong. And how how about their scouting of Quebec under T- Trevor Timmins for twenty years? You satisfied with that? Again, if you are, fine. But I wasn't, and no. Francophone journalists where I mean, look, Anglo journalists don't really care about this stuff. They don't. Uh, it's not as big a deal for them for obvious reasons. But uh, and usually whenever I write about this issue of the lack of Francophone players on the Habs, the yeah. general English language reaction is, oh, you're just playing to the nationalist cheap seats. And I don't think that's true. I think that it's part of the heritage of the Canadian and they should they should be more concerned about this than they are. Um, and the solution is not to do what they did when Dano left is pick up, they picked up three French players that summer and they were all pretty not good players to be polite, right? With Paquette, Perrault and Savard. None of those worked out. Maybe going forward, Savard will be okay, but none of Savard's them. Savard's a good player. We didn't have a good Perrault's year. A good player too. It's just, he's more, he's, he's, you know, he's it, at the end of his career. Team, I don't Paquette, know. Paquette, the game got faster and it's passed him by. All I know is the solution, and you were saying that earlier, so I agree with that. The solution is not to just say, oh, my God, we need French players and go get th- the three that happen to be available when they're, they're none of them worked out for the team. You can tell me they're good players, but none of them worked out. Well, that's why I'm saying. You need the good ones. Correct. You need the good ones. And, Three, and well, so make more of an effort to get the good ones. That's all. There's, there's, there's less stars now. Uh, look, there's less players from Quebec, once again, the National Hockey League than ever before. And there's less star players from Quebec in the National Hockey League right now than ever before. And when there were some, you know, they blew some on draft picks. You're right. They, they, they didn't draft some of them, but they tried to acquire some by trade. They weren't able to pull it off. They tried to sign some of them near the end of their careers as unrestricted free agents. And those players chose not to come here. I mean, I think when those players chose not to come here, we should look at them, too. Well, no, we look at the Canadians. I'm not just blaming the Canadian. I mean, the Daniel Briere story is the perfect example, right? When he was a hot player, when he was a free agent, when he would be a very useful player to have, he was offered something really nice here and he didn't want to come. And all of our impressions were he didn't want to come because 
it would be a lot more pressure here in Montreal. So he finally signed with Montreal six years later when he was basically washed up. I mean, he was a shadow of his former. Near the end of his career, there was a lot less pressure then than there was now. And maybe his kids, his family, everyone was older too, and it was ready for the time. It was, a, it was probably a better time. But anyway, uh, why don't you and I do this again? What's your next article going to be about? Do you have anything already at the top of your head or anything? Or? Wrote that one, yeah, the the, the day uh, yesterday. So yeah, uh, brain is uh, you know I I don't I only get ideas once a week. So yeah, next week I'll have another idea. Don't worry. Once I'm back on the radio, I'm back on TV and podcasting with more frequency. You're gonna get ideas more often. You want to know why? Why you're take them from me? Excellent. I mean, do you have any ideas? Can you help me out for the rest of this week? I'm saving them for when I get going again. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks for doing this, man. Funny. See you later, man. All right. There you have it. This is my man, Brendan Kelly, the Montreal Gazette. What the puck? Tell your friends about the podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Subscribe. It's absolutely free. And once again, don't forget to send us an email. Our winners at info at the sickpodcast.com. Let's bring up those names one more time. These are our winners who are going to WWE Friday Night SmackDown, Friday, August 19th at the Bell Center. Those are our 10 winners, and you're going to get a pair of tickets each. Email us, info at the sickpodcast.com. Tell your friends about it. Until next time, I'm Marinaro, and this is no joke. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakaj. If the last time you went to Lakaj was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakaj. The menu will surprise you.